Hello, fellow believers. How are you? I am theology instructor Kim Byung Do. Today we'll study God's Word together with a lesson titled Introductory Lesson 19 Figurative Blood and Flesh of the Lamb. Let us first read together Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, as our main passage today. I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It says that their robes were made white by being washed in the blood of the Lamb, according to our main passage. But if the blood of the Lamb mentioned here was a physical blood, the robes washed in it would turn red, not white, since the blood of the Lamb is also red. Therefore, We can see that the blood of the Lamb described in our main passage means something spiritual, not physical. Furthermore, the robes that are made white by being washed in the blood would also mean spiritual robes, not physical robes, right? Through introductory lesson 14, figurative wedding clothes, we learned things like wedding clothes, white robes, and fine linen refer to the righteous acts of the saints, the believers. In the same way, In order for our actions to be acknowledged as righteous by God, we must perceive the spiritual meaning of the blood of the Lamb, which is figuratively compared to the physical blood of the Lamb, so we can have the clean and righteous acts washed by that blood. At this time, we will now learn about the reality of the figurative blood and flesh of the Lamb. Let me tell you the answer first. The reality of the blood and flesh of the Lamb is the words of Jesus which gives us life. Let us now find out through the Bible in detail why the figurative blood and flesh of the Lamb refer to the words of Jesus that give us life. First, let's see what the figurative Lamb is referring to. In order for us to see the reason a physical lamb appeared in the Bible, we must first go back to Moses' time, approximately 3,500 years ago. This was a time when the people of God were being kept as captives by a Gentile nation called Egypt. In order to bring them out and save them, those people who were kept as slaves for 400 years, God chooses a prophet. This was Moses. When Moses went into Egypt to save the Hebrews, who were kept as captives, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt at that time, did not want to let them go. That is why God, through Moses, sent ten deadly plagues on the land of Egypt. And the last of these ten plagues was the plague of the firstborn. The tenth plague of the firstborn was a terrible plague which struck down every firstborn in Egypt, both men and animals. However, God's people should not suffer from such a plague, but should rather escape from such disaster, right? The method in which God gave them to escape such a plague is recorded in the words of Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. We can see from those words the method God made known through Moses in order to escape such a plague. It is written that they will slaughter a lamb and take its blood, putting it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses. And if they were to eat the meat by roasting it over the fire that night, the spirit of the plague would not enter into that house but would pass over it, this being the event of Passover. This event of Passover the festival God told to commemorate for generations to come as a lasting ordinance. To summarize once again, this was the event of Passover, a historical and physical event of the people being saved from a plague, saved by the blood and the flesh of the Lamb. And it was Jesus who came 2,000 years ago on this earth as the Savior, right? Just as God's people were saved by the blood and flesh of the Lamb at the time of Moses, Jesus came in the position of the Lamb and was sacrificed. I'm sure all of you already know this. John the Baptist testified regarding Jesus. According to John chapter 1, verse 29, 
Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Through this, we can see that Jesus came to this earth in the position of the Lamb. Jesus is also referred to as a Lamb in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Let us read it together. Get rid of the old yeast, that you may be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed. As we've just read, it is written that our Passover Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, we can know that Jesus came in the position of a lamb, the Passover lamb, and that he was sacrificed. So, the reality of the figurative lamb is Jesus. As the title of today's lesson suggests, what we want to find out is the spiritual meaning of the figurative blood and flesh of the lamb. So now, let us take a look together at the spiritual meaning of the figurative blood and flesh of the Lamb. If the Lamb of the blood and flesh of the Lamb is Jesus, then the blood and the flesh must be referring to the blood and flesh of Jesus, right? The explanation of what the blood and flesh of Jesus are is recorded in John 6. The content of John 6 is regarding the miracle of feeding 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. This was among many miracles Jesus performed 2,000 years ago. I believe you're already familiar with this content. After Jesus performed this miracle, Jesus withdrew from them, knowing that they had begun to call him the prophet and wanted to make him king by force. To the crowd that followed him, even after Jesus withdrew from them, he said they were looking for him not because of the miraculous signs, but because they ate the loaves and had their fill. So we can see that the content of John 6 is regarding Jesus' rebuking of the crowd that followed him to gain physical food. Then, Jesus said, according to verse 27, Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life. The food that spoils, mentioned here, refers to the physical food that we must eat in order for our physical bodies to live. And the food that endures to eternal life, mentioned here, refers to the spiritual food we must eat for our spirits to live. We have already taken a look at the meaning of the spiritual food which is compared to physical food, in Introductory Lesson 5, Food at the Proper Time. We've learned that there is physical food that we eat with our mouths, and there is spiritual food that we eat by hearing with our ears, which refers to God's Word, right? Therefore, Jesus was explaining through this verse that we have to follow Jesus to attain the Word, our spiritual food. Then, who gives this food that endures to eternal life? As it says at the end of verse 27, the Son of Man is the one who gives this food. By this we can know that the food that endures to eternal life is given by Jesus, who came in the position of the Son of Man. What is this food? According to verses 49 to 51, Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. We can see it through this picture. Jesus referred to himself as the living bread that came down from heaven. Jesus then said, Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died, and that if they eat this bread given by Jesus, they will not die, but will have eternal life. He also said, This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. When he said such things, the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves and said, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Let's read together how Jesus answered them from verses 53 to 55. Jesus said to them, 
I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Jesus said, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you, and that one must eat Jesus' flesh and drink Jesus' blood to have eternal life. He also said that his flesh is real food and his blood is real drink. So we can see the real food that we must work for is the flesh and blood of Jesus. To summarize once again, Jesus is the living bread that came from heaven. And the bread that Jesus gives is his blood and his flesh. And those who eat his flesh and his blood can attain eternal life. If so, does this mean Jesus will give his physical flesh and blood? Does this mean we can obtain eternal life by eating his physical flesh and blood? This is something we should think about, right? The flesh and blood of Jesus promised to give are not something physical. He was referring to something spiritual. Let us find out by reading verses 63 together. The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. As we've just read, Jesus said that the spirit gives life and the flesh counts for nothing. Thus, it's not Jesus' physical flesh and blood that gives life, but a spiritual meaning is hidden behind those words. Jesus said, The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. From this, we can know that we can attain life by the words Jesus spoke. Many people who followed Jesus at the time did not perceive these words, and they ended up leaving him. When only the twelve disciples were by his side, Jesus asked them, You do not want to leave, do you? Simon Peter, one of the twelve disciples, answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This means only the twelve disciples perceived that eternal life can be attained solely by the words which Jesus spoke, right? So, the reality of the flesh and blood of the Lamb that people had to eat to attain eternal life was the words of Jesus that gave life. And the reality of those who ate the blood and the flesh was the twelve disciples of Jesus. Furthermore, the result of eating them was attaining eternal life. If we are also the believers whose hope is in heaven, salvation, and eternal life, then we must also become those who eat the food of eternal life, the flesh and the blood of Jesus, just as the twelve disciples of Jesus did, right? What was the food that the disciples ate two thousand years ago? The words that Jesus testified to were the words of the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies written about him, right? That's what he spoke to the disciples about. People who hear the words of Jesus were able to perceive the reality of how the Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled, right? This was the flesh and the blood of Jesus that they had to eat 2,000 years ago. However, today's era is not the era of the Old Testament, but is the era of the New Testament. This is the era of the fulfillment of the New Testament, right? Then let us correctly perceive the flesh and the blood of Jesus that we must eat in this era and enter into our hope of eternal life by eating them. Jesus, who gave life to the world through his blood 2,000 years ago, also gave us a new covenant. In Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20, there is a story about the night of Passover when Jesus gave the new covenant. Jesus gave the new covenant to his disciples through his blood and said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. 
Then he said, He would not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes, until the fulfillment of the kingdom of the Father. This means that there was a Passover food to be eaten 2,000 years ago, the flesh and the blood of the Lamb. And there also is a Passover food to be eaten again, the flesh and the blood of the Lamb, when the kingdom of God is fulfilled and when it comes. Then Jesus gave bread and wine to the disciples and told them to do the same in remembrance of him. The wine and the bread here are referring to the physical food, not the true Passover food of the flesh and the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, we can see that there is an era to keep in remembrance, and there also is an era when the fulfillment of the New Testament prophecies, the Passover food that we must eat again, appears. Then those who eat it will also appear. So then, what is the Passover food that we must eat in today's era? In Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 29, the same content of Jesus' new covenant appears as we've seen in Luke chapter 22. Here, Jesus promised that we will eat something new in the Father's kingdom. As it is called new, it is not something that was eaten before, but something new, right? The flesh and the blood of the lamb that the disciples ate 2,000 years ago were the words of Jesus which give life. More accurately, this means that they perceive Jesus' words of testimony of the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. If so, in the New Testament era, we must perceive the words of the fulfillment of the New Testament prophecies, right? Now, let us find out the Passover food that we must eat today, the flesh and the blood of the Lamb. What is recorded in Revelation chapter 2 is the manna that we must eat in today's era. Let us read Revelation chapter 2, verses 17 together and find out what kind of process Jesus takes to give the true bread, the flesh and the blood of the Lamb. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. These are Jesus' words that we have just read. Jesus promised that he will give the hidden manna to the one who overcomes. Manna, mentioned here, is referring to bread. The bread that was given at the time of Moses was physical food, and the bread that Jesus gave 2,000 years ago was the living bread that came from heaven, Jesus' flesh and blood, meaning it was spiritual food. And this bread, called hidden manna, that Jesus gives in this era is also referring to spiritual food, not physical food. Then, we can also call this flesh and blood of Jesus, right? What is this hidden manna that we must eat in today's era, the flesh and the blood of Jesus? This must be something different from what was given 2,000 years ago, right? Certainly, there was the flesh and the blood of Jesus people had to eat 2,000 years ago. But as Jesus promised to eat it anew, when the kingdom of the Father is fulfilled and when it comes, we can clearly see that the flesh and blood of the Lamb we must eat today are different from what was given 2,000 years ago. Let us find out who gives the food that we must eat today through Matthew 24. The content of Matthew chapter 24 is the words of prophecy regarding the signs of the end of the world when the Lord returns. If you read from verses 45 through 47 of the chapter, what was prophesied was the appearance of the faithful and wise servant whom the master put in charge of his servants of his household to give them their food at the proper time. Then, it is called food at the proper time we can see that there is a different food to be eaten in each of the different eras. Then the content of Matthew chapter 24 is regarding the food to be eaten at the time of the Lord's second coming, right? So, 
This is the content of explanation regarding the hidden manna mentioned in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. The flesh and the blood of the Lamb, the spiritual food that we must eat in today's era. And this content is letting us know who gives this food. Then, we must correctly understand who the faithful and wise servant is, the one who gives the food at the proper time, which is the flesh and the blood of the Lamb that we must eat to attain eternal life. And we must meet this faithful and wise servant and eat the food at the proper time, the flesh and blood of the Lamb, and attain eternal life. Wouldn't this be the believer who received the greatest blessing? Then who is the faithful and wise servant? In Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The Revelation of Jesus Christ. This means that the words of the book of Revelation are not revealed by Apostle John, but by Jesus, right? Then, to whom is the reality of the fulfillment of the New Testament being shown so that they may perceive it? We can find out the answer by going to Revelation chapter 10. It says in Revelation chapter 10 verse 1 and on that an angel comes down from heaven holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. And these open words are given to John which are to be eaten by him. This is the content recorded in verses 8 to 10. So, we can see that this person called John is the only one who has seen, heard, and perceived the words of the open scroll and who has the revelation of Jesus, right? This revelation of Jesus is the words that Jesus is giving us in today's era, the flesh and the blood of Jesus. So, the reality of the person who has perceived and received the flesh and blood of Jesus, the revealed word, is John. However, John mentioned here is not referring to John, who was one of the twelve disciples of Jesus two thousand years ago. John who appears in today's era is different from the John who appeared two thousand years ago, because he appears in the era of the reality of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. Thus, we can know that he is a pastor like Apostle John, different from the John who appeared 2,000 years ago. Therefore, the reality of the faithful and wise servant who gives the food at the proper time, the flesh and the blood of the Lamb we must eat today, is a pastor like Apostle John. Whoever he may be, if he has received the word and testifies to it, to give life to the world, then I believe meeting such a shepherd is the most important and valuable blessing for us all. Then, we must check if we ourselves have the true Passover food in today's era, the flesh and the blood of Jesus. If we do not have it, then we must correctly know and find a pastor like Apostle John, who is a reality of the faithful and wise servant who gives the proper food. Hear his words and perceive them to enter our hope of heaven, salvation, and eternal life. Let us summarize the content of today's lesson. What was the reality of the figurative flesh and blood of the Lamb? It was the words of Jesus which give life. However, there was the flesh and the blood of Jesus that were to be eaten 2,000 years ago. And there also is the flesh and blood of Jesus which we must eat today. 2,000 years ago, at the time of the first coming, the reality of the fulfillment of the Old Testament was the flesh and the blood of the Lamb, which had to be eaten to attain eternal life. In today's era, the time of the second coming, the reality of the fulfillment of the New Testament is the flesh and the blood of the Lamb that we must eat in order to attain eternal life. So, believers, we can know if we are eating the flesh and the blood of the Lamb by checking if we ourselves know the words of the fulfillment of the New Testament. If you do know such content, then you can be someone who can eat of it and have eternal life. But if you do not know it, then you may be someone who has nothing to do with eternal life, right? Then, we must not be in the same position as the crowd of people who left Jesus 2,000 years ago, but must be in the same position as the disciples 
who correctly perceive the word to attain eternal life. We'll finish today's lesson here. Next time, we'll learn about the figure of wine and olive oil through introductory lesson 20. We will take a look at what the spiritual wine of the Bible is compared to the physical wine and what kinds of wine there are. We will have a time to correctly perceive the reality of the wine that we must drink in today's era. Also, through the lesson of the figurative olive oil, we will find out what the lamp and the oil are that we must prepare in order for us to be in the position of brides to accept Jesus, who is the bridegroom. I pray in the name of Jesus for you, please perceive all the words perfectly and seal God's secrets in your hearts, reaching heaven, salvation, and eternal life. We'll finish today's lessons here. Thank you. If one does not know the secrets of heaven, the parables, he will not be forgiven and will become a person on the outside. This era is not the era of speaking figuratively, but the era of knowing plainly. This is the time of harvest. Those who are harvested are the sons of the kingdom of heaven. Those who are not harvested and who remain in their churches are the sons of the devil. Let us become those who are saved by believing according to what is promised.